This is a simple model for 3D printing. Let's look at how you design it yourself using Fingercast. I have this cheap vise from China and the original grips have a rusty smell. So we'll look into designing this 3D printed PLA part. It's got recessed holes for the screws to keep, keep the part in place. And there are recessed areas to hold a round object both vertically and horizontally. I looked around to see if there were any ready-made models which I could use. However, there weren't any models that fit the shape I was looking for or had editable files so I could move the mounting holes. So I ended up using Fingercat to design the 3D model. I'm pretty new to the whole 3D printing myself and I found this tool to be incredibly beginner friendly. And I highly recommend it if you're designing an object which is a combination of a few simple shapes. So this is the 3D model in Tinkercad. You can see it's made up out of a couple simple shapes. There's this shape in the top, uh, which I'll remove so you can see the rest. And the base is made up out of two prisms. And there's two cylinder pairs to make the holes for the screws. And finally there's this rotated roof object, uh, which will cut out a piece of the, the main body. To actually create this object, let's start out with a new project and drag in a ruler. Now for reference I'm going to add a box, which will be the same shape as the original metal grip which is 18 millimeters by 100 and it has got a height of 4 millimeters. The new base is made out of two wedges. Again, this is 18 millimeters by 100. And a height of 10 works out nicely. So let's copy paste that, move it back with the arrow keys a bit and rotate it 180 degrees holding the shift key. The old reference object in red is no longer needed so I'll select that and hit delete and I'll take the two wedges and group them together so they're one part. The center cutout is made out of a roof basic shape, rotated 180 degrees. And it should be in the middle of this other shape. So let's first move it somewhere in the vicinity using the arrow keys and then select both shapes. And now with the alignment toolbar from the top, we can center it using the black dot. Uh, no. This, this isn't quite right, let's undo, all right. Let's just make this top shape uh, big enough so it covers the entire blue base shape. And make it a hole. Now if we group it together with the rest, it should make a nice cutout. There we go. Now the top edges are still a bit sharp, so we'll try to blend it off by flattening it with a cube. Let's get it the size of the base shape, same width and the same length. Right. And let's raise it so it's on top. And if we select both the top and the bottom and merge them, we've got a nice blunt edge. The cutout for the hole is just a cylinder with dimensions six and a half by six and a half. It's positioned from the midpoint, 17 from the left and nine from the bottom. Now let's turn it into a solid so we can see a bit better. And we'll create a copy a bit bigger than this one so we can recess the screw head into uh, the base. It's got dimensions 10 by 10 and it should be 
up a bit relative to the to the hole itself. So let's group these two parts together and create a copy which will move over to the right side at 85. Now selecting both elements, we'll make these holes. Select the base and if we group everything together, we have our final component. At least that's what I hoped, but the screws didn't recess far enough into the, into the grip. So we'll actually taper down the, the hole a bit. We can do that by using a cone, flipping it upside down, 180 degrees, holding shift again and setting the dimensions and after a bit of fiddling I got it to line up with the existing cylinder now we group it together and move it down into the to the base and if we make this into a hole and select the base as well group it up we should get a nice clean cutout which is a bit bit deeper than last time. The old hole is still incorrect so let's copy this one and move this one over as well. Finally if we select everything and group it together we get our nice clean end result with deep enough holes for the screws to recess. From here we can just export the STL file and import it into our slicer software. I'm using the Prusa slicer because I've got a Prusa printer uh, with the basic settings of 15 millimeter layer height with a 15% infill. Creating a slicing plan shows a nice clean layer construction. So let's export this to G-code and print it and let's look at the end result. So the part came out pretty cleanly out of the printer and I think it looks looks good. There's a small hole in there to recess the screws and as you can see if you drop them in they fit nice and snugly. So I ended up printing two of these and putting them on the vise. They line up pretty well, not exactly but that's just part of the the holes not being lined properly in the vise. And the cutouts to keep the vertical and horizontal rounded objects in place work really well. So uh, overall I'm pretty pleased with the results. I've made more advanced models with Tinkercad as well, but it gets really tedious if you want to hollow something out, taper a hole or repeat some object. For that I suggest you look into Fusion 360. But for small objects such as this, these vice grips, uh, it worked really well. If you liked the video, please leave a like, uh, or if you didn't like it, let me know in the comments what I could change to make it better.